you. So you highlighted an interesting, you know, so obviously the trend right now, the, the need for food delivery and the demand there is growing big time, right? And, you know, coronavirus, I think, has only accelerated that trend. So restaurants are seeing huge demand right now. And like you said, that's interesting. You know, some for some restaurants, it actually sounds like this model is working, right? Um, maybe for the Chipotle's, you know, maybe for the, you know, like you mentioned, the fast casuals where they can actually, you know, I think Starbucks, for example, I ordered on Uber Eats the other day on Starbucks and there was actually an option for me to share my information with Starbucks. And I know that's something that a lot of the independent mom and shop, mom and pop shops have complained about in the past is that when you place an order on one of these app services, um, you know, they have no idea who you are or what you're ordering and can't contact you in the future. So it sounds like the big boys basically do have some bargaining power. And for them, it, it may be, is, is the system working for them right now, you think? Um, yeah, I mean, I think Sweet Green, you know, had a deal with okay. Uber Eats where, you know, they were they weren't paying marketplace fees for those placements and mm. they were using Uber Eats to power all the delivery inside of the Sweet Green app. And I think under normal cir circumstances, they wouldn't be, you know, signing up to do this because they've probably run the numbers and realized that, you know, it just doesn't work unless you do an insane amount of volume and then you prove that it's incremental. Who, who wouldn't so be that's doing it? Sweet Green. Okay. I don't think uh, under a normal circumstance that they would be, um, mm so eager to jump on the Uber Eats bandwagon. Gotcha. And I think a lot but of with other all the other benefits and all the bonuses or the, you know, sort of bargaining, sure. then it kind of makes financial sense for them. Yeah. If they don't have to pay the, the marketplace fees, then you, you, you know, they can use the, the, just the driver component, the mm -hmm. delivery component of Uber Eats for their, um, if, if you order on their app and if you order, sorry, on the sweet green app. And if you order on the Uber Eats app, they're not paying, uh, a commission they're probably just paying for the for the delivery fee gotcha so um that's a much better i mean there's there is a cost of doing delivery right, right? and just the problem is when you get to the 30 okay. percent and it's my main channel then we have a problem because it's not it was designed in a way where where restaurants were already presumably operating in in the black and mm -hmm. um through and making uh, you know decent margin off of their dine-in sales. The yeah. problem is when we eliminate that. Yeah, that's a good takeout point. Takeout becomes the new takeout becomes the new dine-in, right? Because I'm making 100%. I'm, I'm making full margin on on those orders. I don't have to pay some mm -hmm. other person other than my landlord and gotcha. my other overhead, but. I mean, I guess, yeah, I'm, I'm really interested in this sort of idea of who is delivery working for and who isn't it working for. And, you know, I think it makes sense that the big companies, you know, the big brands are able to negotiate better terms, you know, and I think you, as a consumer, you probably noticed it too, you know, some restaurants or some chains are only available on one app, right? So I'm assuming that there's mm -hmm. something going on behind the scenes there, you know, where these sure. restaurants are getting, <clears throat> excuse me, an exclusive deal and uh, you know that's a good thing for them so uh but for the ones you know for, i guess for these mom and pop shops where it's not working um you know like you said there is a cost for delivery right i mean they do have to pay you know it sounds like the 30 percent number is a number i've seen thrown out you know most often is that kind of like what the average commissions are and i mean delivery has to be some of that and you know the you know i guess the platform fee has to be other part right yeah so it's you know the generally speaking, it's like 15% marketing and 15% delivery. Okay. And, you know, we can talk about the caps and what that's done to reduce that and, and tier one cities, but, um, that's generally okay. the breakdown. So they're, they're generally charging around 30% and, uh, you know, 15% for delivery, 15% for marketing. And so I guess, you know, for these restaurants that it's not working out, uh, what, what are their options? I guess in my mind, you know, they could try and, you know, deliver themselves, not work with these companies at all. Um, or, you know, I'm curious to know what their options are, because we see this a lot with Uber and Lyft drivers. You know, that's probably one of the top two or three complaints is that the companies take too high of a take rate. And the biggest thing that I always hear pushback from people is that why don't you stop driving or why don't you quit driving and, you know we could get into those reasons but we're not talking about uber and lyft drivers today we're talking about food delivery and restaurant tours so i'm going to pose that question mm -hmm. to you if these fees mm -hmm. are so high for the mom and pop shops what are the reasons why um, they're still using them yeah i think it's you know they just don't i think there's just a general lack of um awareness around you know, so why are the people still using them? It's Corona. I think people are in a panic yeah. and they, they don't know what other the solutions are out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, um, 
if they really sat down and looked at it and looked at, you know, Grubhub's deferring commissions, if they actually looked at what they're going to owe coming out of this, like, you know, and, and who's going to be the first lien on all these different, uh, all the, all this debt that, that restaurants are incurring from their landlords and, mm-hmm. and, uh, the now Grubhub, you know, it's just like, are they ever going to be able to pay these things back and the a, and then, um, you know, why are they still doing it there? They, there's a general demand from the consumer that that customer that used to come in and order in mm-hmm. is now stuck at home. So, you know, I've seen restaurants trying to, to push people to call directly. Yeah. I just, I don't think a lot of restaurateurs are thinking about it that well, they're telling everybody right. that they're on all the apps because they want to be convenient to everyone. And it's this very difficult time. Yeah. And I think they, they don't realize that it's like, I'm already engaging with you on Instagram as a brand. Mm-hmm. And I'm, or I'm already, already on your website. Don't tell me to go and order on your Postmates because that's <laughs> yeah. 20 to 30 percent off the top, just gone. Right. You've already acquired me as a customer. I'm already loyal. Why not just put up a chow now or put up some sort of direct? We, we can dive into yeah, these definitely. other options because um, I'm definitely thinking a lot about it. And I'm probably writing about it um, this week. I'm writing a post. I think it's called like the the modern restaurant stack. 